everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with Series 3 of Mattel's Masterverse, Masters of the Universe, Revelation Figures. Four more figures are featured in this series that had been easier to find than most of the collector brands out there. This has slowly changed as some of the popular figures have become increasingly scarce. This series features Fisto, Andra, Scareglow, and a perennial favorite of mine, Stinkor. I can't wait any longer, so let's not waste any more time and take a look at Masterverse Masters of the Universe Revelation Figures Series 3 by Mattel. Okay, so let's take a look at our first figure from Series 3. Oh, series 3 already, wow. It is uh, Fisto. Fisto with his big iron fist and his big red beard. And he looks pretty much just like he did way back in the day in the vintage line. Got pretty much the same colors. Just he's a little bit more serious looking. A little bit more realistic, if you will. Uh, comes with his sword. Comes with uh, a couple pairs of hands. And, of course, his iron fist fist as well not sure if we've got nope just comes with uh three left hands and one big iron fist be nice if he came with a, a you know just instead of coming with a slapping hand and a holdy hand and a fist on the other side maybe minus one or two of these and we give uh we give him another another uh, iron fist maybe with a pointing finger an open iron fist maybe or maybe maybe he might be taking jitsu's gimmick but anyway uh, let's take a look at the back of the box it says fisto heroic master of hand to hand combat evil warriors better be hungry because fisto has a knuckle sandwich for them and it's got plenty of iron in it the man with the mighty metal fist packs enough power in his punch to rival even Eternia's strongest warriors. One of the planet's greatest heroes, it's only fitting that he protects the royal palace from dark forces, both technological and mystical. And we have uh, an image here of Fisto busting some demon guy in the face with his big iron arm. And, uh, and you got a, a guard back there. You got some guys on sky sleds zipping through the night sky. Very, very cool. Looks like we're on the, the jaw bridge of Castle Grayskull in this image. Oh, we've got, uh, looks like one of those guys on the Rotor back there as well. Love the little little bits and pieces they, they hide in the art on these things. These, these boxes have got some great art on them, but I didn't buy this box for the picture on the back. I bought it for the figure that comes inside. And we're gonna see all these figures today, but before we do that, let's take a look at who is next. So next up is Andra, or Andra, I don't know uh, how to pronounce her name. She is a character from the comic books that I have seen before, if it's the same character that we're using. They've changed her a wee bit. Uh, much like Tila, she's got a very Star Wars looking outfit on her, and by the color scheme, can you guess which Star Wars character they're trying to evoke? I'll give you one hint. It rhymes with Loba Fett. <laughs> anyway, um, comes with three pears of hands, a, a, a pew pew shooty thing for her wrist rocket um, that looks a lot like somebody else's, and a mask. Of course, a helmet to go upon the head of Andra, and, and a big Jedi cloak because it, it, as if there wasn't enough Star Wars crap in this uh in this line let's turn the box around and see what it says on the back here andra heroic officer of eternos the brains to tila's brawn andra dreams of being a hero while her crestfallen partner tries to leave that life behind the starry-eyed scavenger always has a technological trick up her sleeve whether it's using her genius to create inventions or relying on her scrappiness and speed to evade evil, Andrew reminds all Eternians what heroes are and what they can be again. 
and we have a picture of her with a lightsaber. Oh, I'm sorry, let's see, a wrist rocket that we have firing off. And that is the, the Andra uh, figure. And we'll see her later on when we get these things open, but who is next? Oh, take a look at Scare Glow in this line. Not sure what kind of part Scare Glow played on the TV series, but this figure is fan fantastic looking there is one tiny issue with it is that he doesn't really glow um his head technically does glow you really have to fire it up with some uh <laughs> with some light and then when you, you shut out all the light in the world you can see it faintly dimly just sort of there uh not not a, a big uh, uh impressive display uh, and that I would like to see in a glowing figure. They could have at least made his bones glow, but they didn't. Um, but they did do a very nice looking sculpt. Comes with his uh, Scythe of Doom, as we we know. That's what that's called. And uh, if we turn the box around, it says, Scare Glow, Evil Ghost of Skeletor. Fear his glow. The Skeletal Spectre rules the underworld of Subternia trapping lost souls inside their deepest, darkest nightmares. But it has been too long since Scare Glow has tasted true fear. If the daring adventures wish to pass through his domain, they must pay the price. Fear for Scare Glow to feast upon or be trapped in Subternia forever. <laughs> and we have some like souls screaming in the background um very cool looking uh image of this uh, skeleton man <laughs> with a with a, a clear body in his glowing skeleton his green glowing skeleton very very cool looking uh, we'll take a look at him later but who is next and finally i saved um probably my favorite for last at least of this line between him and scare glow very very cool looking it's Perennial favorite, Stinkor! Ha ha ha! Very, very cool. And not just for the fact that the vintage figure stunk. He smelled, which was cool. It was a cool action feature, I guess. I guess stinking is an action. But let's take a look at this this figure that we have in the box here. He looks, seems like he has like the furry body, almost like Beast Man, but we've painted him. We've given him the, uh, we'll give him the old uh, Stinkor paint job. And, and this will be the first time I, I think that Stinkor appeared before Merman in the line. <laughs> Finally, Stinkor taking his place uh, in, in this sculpt. And I'm sure they'll use uh, Merman for the, the sculpt on the head, which is fine. That's pretty cool. I, li I like the little sort of homage to it. It's got big red gloves, comes with a couple pairs of hands. Um, he comes with an extra head with like a gas mask on, comes with his blue shield. And looks like he has some, uh, some oxygen packs or some sort of uh, chemical packs on the back there. Very cool. We'll see when he get we get them open, but first, Stinkor, evil master of odors. What's that smell? If it's overpowering enough to overwhelm a steaming pile of garbage, that can only mean one thing. Stinkor. Ever the outcast, the rancid wretch disappeared from Skeletor's side, only to be found hoarding ancient artifacts in his putrid pig pen of a hideout. Emitting odors foul enough to bring any hero to their knees, never underestimate the savage stench of Stinkor. And we have a very cool image of Stinkor here, as well as our collect them all. And speaking of collecting them all, I have collected them all as we saw before, and I cannot wait any longer. So let's see what these figures look like outside of the box. Okay, so let's first up take a look at Fisto. Fisto, again, like I said before, has a, has a look very reminiscent of the vintage line Fisto and the Fisto from the comics and cartoons and whatever other bullshit um, from the old days. This one, of course, in the style of uh, the Masterverse, Masterverse Revelations, whatever, um, has the big fist like you'd like him to have. Thing is, 
very substantial. Um, it almost feels like it's made of metal. Very solid, this thing is. It's heavy. Um, I don't know if this end of the fist is made of metal, but it seems like it's colder than the rest of the piece. So, so maybe... Is it die cast? I don't know! Maybe I get to put a magnet up against it to find out. Who knows? I don't have a magnet up here. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the, the armor. Very cool looking. Um, great looking paint job on him. Very nice, exact paint job, just like the rest of these figures. Comes with uh, extra hands, extra left hands at least. Comes with grabbing hands, holding hands, uh, got a slapping hand, and I think another fist. Then he comes with this sword. Um, really only needs the holding hand. And maybe the fist. I don't know why you'd need the, the open smacking hand, but whatever. Extra stuff is always cool. Holds the sword very well. Uh, looks nice. Looks like you'd want him to look. And uh, as far as uh, characters go, uh, Fisto is pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look at Andra, um, who, <laughs> let's be honest, look at the color scheme on this figure. You got green, you got gray, you got kind of a brown, you got a red wrist rocket sort of thing going on, you got a big black robe. It is very, if, without saying anything, it's evocative, at least evocative, of Star Wars. This is Barbara Fett. <laughs> very much Barbara. Well, you'd say, well, there is, he doesn't have a mask. Where's the, no, there it is, it's right there. Um, almost Boba Fett mask. Uh, very Star Wars looking, at least. Very cool. Andra is from the comic books. Um, and uh, is one of the the palace guard uh, in the in the comics at least uh, they did change her up a little bit for the, this series to use her as a character of course i haven't seen it so i know exactly what they do with her uh, this, according to the back of the box she's a uh, tila's partner um looks cool looks like honestly looks like boba fett with a cape um, or at least a bigger cape. He does have a cape, doesn't he? And then they got a little effect for the wrist rocket. Comes with multiple hands, three pairs of hands. We got fists, holy hands, and uh, open hands. Uh, the This um, cloak, I guess, cape, we'll call it. Very cool. It's got a hood on it, and it's got these extra pieces that you can uh, kind of open up and wear in whatever way that you want. Um, very, very cool. You can have it down, have it up, and it looks very natural. I really like this uh, extra feature on the figure. It's very nice. It's gonna look cool on display, if not a little out of place for Masters of the Universe. At least it goes with that Tila figure. That's very Star Wars looking. This is a very Star Wars-esque figure. Imagine being such a big Star Wars mark that you have to add something Star Wars into every single thing that you do. Well, we have another example of that here, but that's just fine because Andrew is a cool looking character and that's about it. All right, so here he is. It's uh, for the second time, Scareglow! Um, or the third time, really, because I, I reviewed the Scareglow from uh, the Origins line in 2021. I, I reviewed the Scareglow from the uh, uh, the same one again uh, in one of our uh, Masters Peace Theater episodes where we reviewed the actual series that he was in. And now we are taking a look at a scare glow from Masters of the Universe Origins. And uh, here he is with his, with his bones and his skull head that only just faintly friggin' glows. It's, and that is it. That's the only thing that glows on this figure. And I was going to say, well, he don't glow, but he, he does. Technically, in the, the broadest sense of the word, he does glow, but not that much. Still a very cool looking figure. Has this nice uh, fabric cape. I like that a lot. I like the look of the figure. He comes with his uh, scythe of doom, which is more of like a, an axe or a, a pole arm side of, sort of thing, but still pretty cool. Looks great, will display great, only unfortunately I wish they could have made the bones glow and made this glow a little bit brighter. If that had been the case, this would have been an A-OK, -okay, but in the number one figure in the line. But as it is, still pretty cool, that's Scare Glow. And finally, you know I always save my favorite for last, we have... 
stink or here he is it's stink or and he's big and he's furry and he looks like a skunk and he looks like the old action figure from back in the day but he's got a little bit he's got the you know the mech neck orange armor but on the back this one has got some uh, oxygen tanks maybe like so he's got this extra head that comes with him and by the way paint job on these things fantastic love the look of the face those eyes those are amazing the paint jobs on these figures fantastic look at this head comes with this extra mask i thought this was all sculpted together look at that take off the little gas mask part and he's got an open mouth version as well so that's pretty cool clicks on and off fantastic fantastic accessories for this doesn't come with any weapons but he does come with his blue shield of course the old the old stink or didn't come with any weapons uh comes with extra hands couple extra hands holding hands big smacking hands and fists um very cool looking figure one problem the thing that that we had with moss man not flocked the thing with scare glow doesn't really glow and stink or he don't stink at all he doesn't smell any different from any other of these figures, which is unfortunate because I know they got the Origins one to smell. So why couldn't we have given this stink or a little bit of stench? He cost enough in the first place. That would have been really nice. If not for that, this figure would be, you know, top, top of the pops, if you will. The bee's knees, if you will. But, uh, but other than that, Still a very cool looking figure, uh, and I still like it a whole lot for the sculpt and everything. It's evocative of the old figure, looks like a new figure, poses great, looks awesome. That is Stinkor.